This is uh, the Frida Noob Hour, and this is a very low-level introduction to VirtualBox. So first I'm going to talk about what VirtualBox is, then I'm going to give you some reasons you might want to use it, go over some very quick safety notes, tell you how to obtain and install it, how to build a virtual machine, how to install an operating system on it, and then we'll go to a live demo. So what is VirtualBox? VirtualBox gives you a computer that you can't kick. I don't know if anyone remembers the old joke, but when someone was asked, what is software, the answer was, it's all the parts of a computer you can't kick. So uh, now you have software that pretends to be computer hardware. So VirtualBox will make for you a little software package thing, a little virtual computer that pretends to be keyboard and mouse and monitor and hard drive and memory and et cetera. You can, within certain limits, specify the type of hardware. If you need it to be 32-bit, you can tell it to be 32-bit. You can, you can make certain specifications. I'm not going to go into all that today, but you can do that. You can certainly say how large a drive, how much memory, uh, how many CPUs, that sort of thing. So VirtualBox builds you a virtual machine, and then you install software on it like you would with any other machine, any regular machine that you can kick. It's sort of the same way. And uh, just go on. So uh, here's a screenshot. And in the screenshot, uh, this is the regular computer screen here, the, the big box. And inside of it, you can see this little square that I'm outlining right now. That is the virtual machine. And you can see it's got a little a start button down here, and it's got the little system tray that you're used to. And here's Firefox running inside of it at the VirtualBox site. And behind that, you can see the VirtualBox website. Here is the control panel for VirtualBox. And over on the right, you can see where I was making this presentation when I took the screenshot. Okay, so it's an entire little computer inside of your computer. Why you might use VirtualBox. Uh, one, you can emulate other types of hardware without having to actually go get that hardware. Like if you've got some old program that only runs on a 32-bit machine or some old operating system, you can do that. Uh, you can also try out different versions of Linux. So this would be a relatively safe way to try out the, some version of Linux that you might not trust or that you might think is difficult. And, and you, don't need another, uh, you don't need a whole other computer to do it. You just use the virtual machine. And if you don't like it, you just delete the virtual machine, and it's gone. And there's no, no problem with e-waste uh, in that case. So um, another thing you might want to do is uh, what I call play with fire, but see the next about safety. For example, if you wanted to try customizing your system, you could install your same operating system in a virtual machine, and you could go try in a bunch of stuff. And if you, if you make it goes horribly wrong and you can't fix it, all you do is delete the virtual machine, and you don't do that to your real computer. So you can practice things. Uh, you could learn why you should not run as root by opening a virtual machine and running as root all the time, and eventually you'll probably do something to shoot yourself in the foot. You can uh, try dangerous commands. Uh, for example, one thing we'll do if we have time is, as, so what happens if you apt to get remove star? You know, does it, this is something you might not want to try doing, and you might, but who knows what will happen. Uh, you can also use software you don't trust, but still be careful. And speaking of that, a quick note on safety. VirtualBox does a really nice job of isolating the virtual machine, but you can set up connections between this little sandboxed machine and the rest of the world. So if you're doing something that you think it might be dangerous, don't open up any connections between the virtual machine and the rest of the world. I'm like, this is not a comprehensive list, but don't give it any Ethernet or a wireless. Don't give it any networking. Don't give it uh, a directory mounted from the host. Don't, certainly don't enable drag and drop between your host and VM. If, you're just, if the purpose is I'm running this VM to test something that might be dangerous, just don't set up any communication to the outside world, and then you're, you're pretty safe. So think carefully if your purpose is to contain. So how to obtain and install it. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about how to do it using Lubuntu, because that's what Frida currently installs on computers, but there are, it works for other types of machines. I'll show a little bit about that in a second. So uh, what you'll first do is go uh, to your, your menu to System Tools and Synaptic Package Manager. Those of you who know how to use app to get you will be able to figure out what to do from what I say. Uh, click on that, enter your password when prompted. Just click on the Search button. Search for virtual box, and then uh, click again the search button. And you'll find um, that you get a bunch of, uh, um, you get a list of things. And you can't really see it here, but right back there, there's virtual box. And when I clicked on this little square, I got this pop-up window here. And so then you click Mark for installation. And after you do that, it's going to say, I have to install all this other stuff. Is that OK with you? And say yes, and uh, say mark. Mark them for installation. That's what it's asking. 
And then this window will appear. You'll see some things are checked in your list now. And if you click apply, it will apply all of the marked changes for you. Uh, it will ask you again, are you really sure? And you say yes. And after this, it's going to take a while. It's got to download all the stuff and install it. But Synaptic will tell you what it's doing while it is doing it. And so I'm not going to show you installing it today. So after it's done, if you are successful, you will see something that looks like this, changes applied successfully, and then you can close Synaptic. If you do not have Lubuntu or you can't do what I just did, so for example, your, your Linux Mint probably has something similar to this on it. You could just do it because it's a version of Ubuntu. So um, you go to virtualbox.org, so virtualbox.org, and in the middle of the screen, there's an enormous blue button that says download, and that's what you click. When you get there, there are uh, VirtualBox packages for a variety of operating systems. The only one that I will mention is Linux because we are here at Frida. You click on that, uh, and, and before we click away and we go, um, this extension pack, something for you to consider if you get comfortable with VirtualBox, just saying that for the future, not going to cover it today, but just to get VirtualBox installed and get used to it, then you, you would click there. After you click there, You'll see a list of different types of Linuxes, and even at the bottom, all distributions. So this one may be a little harder to do, but you can put it on any Linux you want. Click on the type of architecture. Is it a 386 or a 64-bit architecture? And after that, read the instructions. I'm not going to cover the instructions further today, especially since there are so many different types, but that's what you do. OK, using VirtualBox. First thing to know is that VirtualBox is alphabetized under Oracle, for, so don't look under V or you will not find it. It's in the system tools usually on Ubuntu, so uh, find system to tools, Oracle VM VirtualBox, and click there. When it is just open, you'll see a screen that looks something like this. You won't see the children of Caprica. That's my set of machines that I've made for Frida for various reasons. Click on New. We'll do this in a moment live. Click on New, and you'll get start making a new machine. Give your machine a name. So as soon as I typed in Lubuntu, VirtualBox realized that it was probably a 64-bit Linux installation. You can still call it whatever you want, and if VirtualBox doesn't guess correctly, you can set it to whatever you need. So then do that and click Next. Give it some memory. Now here it's sort of important to think about in memory. This is an entirely separate computer living inside your computer. So now your computer has to do the work for two computers. So you don't want to give it more memory, so much memory that your host computer can't run either, right? So here, um, it's, VirtualBox is telling me that my host computer has four gigabytes of memory. So I'm going to set it to about one gigabyte. That's probably enough for your basic machine to run, but not so much that it's going to get in the way of the host operating system, depending on what I'm doing. You add a hard drive. So it, just tell it to create a hard disk, set that default. You can use the default disk type. There's no problem with that unless you know a good reason not to. Dynamically allocated versus fixed. This, the dynamically allocated is the default. I recommend you keep it, and I will explain the difference now. Dynamically allocated means you set a maximum size for the hard drive, but VirtualBox will only take up space on your, your disk according to what it's needed. So, if you gave it 100 gigabytes and it's only needed five so far, it's only going to take up five gigabytes of space on your hard drive. But if you said fixed size 100 gigabytes, right then it's going to take up 100 gigabytes on your hard drive, and that's not going to be available for anything else. There are reasons you might want a fixed size, but unless you are the kind of person who has gotten far enough into this to know that, you probably want dynamic. So here you want to change. Usually VirtualBox underestimates how many gigabytes you need, so you want to definitely give yourself enough. Don't be stingy. Most distros, once you install everything, if you installed everything, it's usually around 20 gigabytes maybe, so you know, make sure you've given yourself enough space. And um, then you'll see, here's your machine, and it's given me a new group, and, and put the machine in, and you can make up groups. We won't do that today. After you got, got that, you've got your new machine showing up there. Click on Settings. This is where you control the hardware. This is where you say how much memory we set before, but you can also say how it boots. Does it boot off of a virtual network or a virtual CD or a virtual hard drive? Uh, 
you can talk about how many processors you get. Display is something I often set. We'll, we'll do this in action, so I'm going to go right after this, and, and we'll go take a look at what all is in settings. Shouldn't take very long. So once again, uh, from your menu, menu, you go to System Tools to Oracle VM VirtualBox. And that should open shortly. And uh, let's go ahead and make a new one. So this is my new Linux. And it's figured out that it's Linux. I'm going to say next. A gigabyte of memory looks good, so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to let it create me a hard virtual hard disk. Leave this default. Let it be dynamically allocated. And I'm going to set the uh, hard drive size up to 50 gigabytes so that I know I've got enough space. And I'm going to say create. And now uh, I have this new virtual machine that I've just made. I'm going to click on settings. And so general, get, you can change the name. If you don't like the name later, you can change it. And there's some other things if you click around, you will be able to find. System, this is where we just were, where we have the, the amount of memory. You can set the number of processors, and you can, you can do some other things. I don't want to go through all of them. One thing that's usually nice is, is set your video memory up to the maximum. That usually makes the display a little bit nicer inside. You can add storage. You can set the audio. You can set your network. Right now, I've got it attached to NAT. So if you're trying to sandbox this, this is where you would go, and you would just unclick Enable Act Network Adapter. Just make sure that none of them are enabled if you're sandboxing the machine to try something out. Uh, you can have serial ports. You can have USB. That's the extension type before. Uh, shared folders. Again, this is you can share between your host and your virtual machine, but don't do that if you're trying to sandbox. So anyway. Um, I think we've got everything set the way we need to. When you said you can have serial ports, uh -huh. does that mean you can have virtual serial reports? Yeah, there's a virtual port? serial port. No, it's not going to make you, manifest you a, something you can plug into, actually. I know, I, I know that would be cool, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've got, let's say if you've got a serial port mm -hmm. on your computer or mm -hmm. you've managed to find someone's USB to serial port adapter or something, mm -hmm. right? You can plug into that and you can tell VirtualBox, oh, here's the serial port, and it'll forward from that physical one to your machine inside that maybe is running the old software you need right. the, virtu the right. serial port for, right? Okay. All right, I'm going to go back to the presentation. All right, yay. So how to install an OS. This is really, ex it's essentially just like how you install an OS anywhere. First thing is you download a CD image. You've done this before probably, or you... Take your CD image off the shelf that you've already got. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be showing Antix, Antix or Antix Linux um, today. So here's the big download button to get it. The reason I'm showing this is because it installed in less than 10 minutes, so I can install it in front of you. Okay. Um, so uh, you would click on your VM that you want, and then you click the Start button. You want to insert a CD drive, your, insert your virtual your CD, and so you click on this button over here, and that will open up a browser, and you browse to your ISO that you want to install, and you say open. And when you've got your ISO there, you go start. And then you will see here my Antix virtual machine has opened up, and I'm at an install menu that you might expect from some sort of operating system. I do have a caveat right now. Lubuntu or Ubuntu 16.04 and VirtualBox do not play well easily together. There is a workaround. If you need to install 16.04 in a virtual machine, can't figure out how, come ask me. I can help you. So uh, this is the last thing I'm going to show uh, on a presentation. And the rest of it is going to be, let's just play around with this live, is the host key. This down here at the bottom, so this is, this is your, your window that's wrapped around your virtual machine. So you see this is the Antix, Antix virtual machine on the inside. Down at the very lower right, it says something like write control. And you can change this to something else. I usually change it to one of the Windows keys, because since I'm using Linux, I never need the Windows key for anything. So um, that's just the way I do it. Um, but you set the host key. The host key is important, and we will see why in a minute. So let's go do a live demo. And then that's, that's all of the buttons of this presentation. So let's go ahead and uh, let's install this virtual machine that we made just a minute ago. I'm going to click Start. I'm going to click this button to go Browse. I'm going to browse to my ISO. And I'm going to click Open. And then I'm going to click Start. And it'll start up. It looks kind of like a regular machine starting up. And here it goes with the Anti-X uh, 
installation. And uh, you, I, if you wanted to, you could explore all these, these different options in there. But I'm just going to go ahead and let it install. So it's going to start installing. And it'll look like a regular installation. Um, oh, well, OK. So it's uh, not installed yet. I have to click install. Sorry. Got completely. Okay. Now, now it's going to. Oh, ah, hang on. I accidentally got two of these. Don't want to confuse it. All right. Next. Um, so this is just a regular. Okay, to format and use entire disk. Yes. So here it's installing. After a minute, I won't have to play with it anymore. Use a virtual box that I found is having a really small, like one really small virtual device, and then just using it to run live CD so you don't have to restart your computer to try stuff out. And like you never install it, you just run the live CDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. What about using that disk to store your? So you wanted to store, you wanted to create your virtual machine, and then when you shut it down, I guess you have a file. Yeah. What about transporting that file to an email to somebody else? Then they can run it on their virtual machine. You can. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit tricky to move a virtual machine around, but you can do it. It's, mm -hmm. You have to go down into virtual boxes into some files, some text files, and you have to edit some stuff to, to match the, the new location. Like the person you sent it to would have to go and do that. It's not real difficult, but it's also, you know, it's, it's not some, you can't just click on something and have it happen, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what I want to do. Anyway. Well, well, you might. No, um, actually Docker, which is a not a bad topic for some time, is probably better suited to that sort of thing, but uh, it's also got its own difficulties. I mean, so other things you can do is you can clone these machines. If you've got one that you like, you can clone it, and you can install something in the clone and see if it breaks it. And if it does, you just delete the clone, and then you clone the one you like again. And so this, this is the sorts of things that, that it's really, really good for. All right, so here we go. Um, it's almost done. Install Grub, yes. Somebody like Rackspace has virtual machines. Do you think they use uh, out-of-the-box? virtual machine like software like this or they can do their own program on it? Um, they could use VirtualBox. There are, there are a number of different virtualization um, options available. Uh, one of the big ones for commercial ventures is VMware, but um, VirtualBox I don't, is also, and they may use their own, I don't know, but yes, mm -hmm. there are, yes, that's what they do. They make virtual machines. Mm -hmm. it, it's but they don't make them from scratch. Uh, they may make them from scratch. So um, I think it's one of the appeals of, say, Amazon Web Services and Rackspace, stuff like that. Is they, they will make you a virtual machine that has whatever you need installed in it, and then you can just go use it. So if you want to make a website, um, they'll install everything that you need except for the code that makes your website look like it does and do what it does, right? So they'll have the web server and everything. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, computer name. Uh, sure, that works. Um, keyboard, thank you. Yeah. All right, um, so uh, default user login name. Um, so for the purpose of this presentation, everything says installer, and that's all. Um, in case you wanted to comply with virtual machine. All right, finish. Yep. And VirtualBox will automatically take the CD out of the drive for you. And <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. But if you wanted to, the place to look is up here in devices, optical drives. You can see what's what's in um, in, in your drive. So, uh, but Antex wants me to press enter. And now it will boot. Now I've got a I've got an operating system that boots just like any other 
Might see. Okay. Antix boots pretty quickly too, which is nice. So Antix is good if you have a 32-bit system because some of the most recent. I'm sorry. Yes. Ed, if you have uh, designed your uh, uh, virtual uh, box uh, computer with a CD drive, when you put uh, this into the CD drive, get designated with the virtual machine or to the uh, machine with both. Let me make sure I understand your question. Your, your question is, I put a physical CD into the physical drive on my machine, yes. and I go uh, to VirtualBox and I want to uh, have VirtualBox see that. Yeah, you, you do have to tell VirtualBox to go look there, but you can do that. It can, the physical CD can be seen by VirtualBox, but you have to tell it to. It doesn't automatically. So what I was saying a, a minute ago about the um, Connections. I think the network connection, NATed network connection, is the only thing it automatically sets up to connect between it and the outside world because most people want that. But it doesn't automatically set up any other connections to your computer, right? And what it means. All right. So I'm gonna log in. And there it is. And I have a regular machine, just like what you might expect. Open a web browser. Eventually. First time, probably slower. Down here, you can see little icons. Um, you can see that this is the network icon. You can see it's, it's monitoring network traffic. This is the, the virtual hard drive being accessed here. Um, and et cetera. So uh, one of the things you might want with the, the control, this right control key, up here at the top, uh, you can change things about the machine. So view, you can go to full screen mode, and you see that it says host plus F. What that means is to toggle back and forth between ho full screen mode, you use the host key, which is right control. You can't use left control. It has to be on the one right. Um, and then you hit F. So I'm going to do that right now. So control F, and it's going to say, it's going to warn me that I just did something that's going to change things. You can not show the message again if you want to. And after you've done this, VirtualBox will be uh, take up your entire screen. It will look like that is your computer. And, and if you want the VirtualBox um, menu, if you just hold your mouse down at the very bottom, you can see here's the same VirtualBox menu that, that you saw at the top uh, before. And it just, it just hides itself when you don't need it. OK? So I said earlier we would uh, give this a try, so we can give this a try. I'm going to uh, go in where, where, where. Here's a terminal. Open a terminal. I'm going to say sudo apt get remove. All right, how about this purge star? <laughs> ever, ever wondered what would happen if you did this? Am I the only person who wonders this sort of thing? <laughs> See, that's the thing with a virtual machine, you can do it. Now, what I, was trying to, I know what I was trying to do right now is if I list the directory constant, contents, it was trying to purge these dits. It would just, it took a, a listing of the directory. Uh, try on the so I think it might just be reading. Um, Yeah, so it's still just reading off the disk. Um, there's got to be a, a way to make that happen. But anyway, if you're ever afraid to do it, you can do it now. We can also go up and say, um, you know, rm-rf star and see how long the virtual machine stays up. <laughs> just, yeah. Right? Did I? No, I didn't. No, I just didn't want my Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, control C to Okay. Needless to say, this machine is now non functional. <laughs> what does the star mean then? Um, I, star means everything. So I, I, I'm, okay. I CD'd up to the top level directory and said to remove everything. And it, it had. An, I controlled seed out of that to prove to him that I'd use sudo, but it had already removed sudo or sudo, and so I couldn't run it now. Okay. If I just put in a remove without the star, 
What would I get? Would it just remove? Um, so if, if I, without the star, what? If I just put remove without the star. It, uh, star will steal, right? Star will do everything, but it won't remove uh, directories. So you have to rm dir directories, or you have to rm dash r star to get directories removed. Okay. Yeah. So um. Oh, okay. List is ls is gone. Um, <laughs> sorry. Echo star. Huh? I can try echo star. But it could still get the man pages, right? Oh, okay. So um, rm. So if I say rm bar, I say rm bar. Uh, rm is gone. Okay. Well, it's only what's in the bash shell that's left. What unlinked is or un, do you know of anything in the bash shell that's native in it? Because I don't think mv is native, but if mv was native, you could try moving it to their um, spell or that null. Yeah, it's not there. Does the Linux call the Linux sister called suicide Linux, where if you type any command indirectly, it automatically RMRF stars Everything. the entire computer wow. without silently. So you have no idea you just done something wrong. <laughs> so <it's not> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so this one is now dead. Um, I'm going to close this and, and power off the machine. If you have done this, uh, it's easy to remove your virtual machine. Um, you can either go up to the machine or I just right click on there and say remove. It's going to say, do you want to delete all the files or just remove the sort of top level data? Let's delete all the files. And now that one's gone. And if you want to make a copy of a machine, so we could try whatever your question was. So I can. Uh, I can clone this. So let's clone it. And start. Full clone, clone. Well, there will be two different instances of it now. Two whole, whole machines that are exactly alike. Just have different names. But if you booted them bo both up, they would look exactly the same. Well, are they from the same memory, though? It's going to, yeah, it's going to, it's going to clone everything exactly. Um, you could go in later and change the memory on one of them and then they would be different, but it's going to clone exactly the same as, as what you had the first machine set to. So you don't have to know how much memory you have to quit from crashing your whole computer, right? You do, but if you remember, whenever it asked you to set the memory, it told you how much you have, okay. and it also gives you the little green part. If you go over the green, that's it's recommended. Don't go over the end of okay. the green bar. If you stay within the green bar, you're pretty good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Was Linux on Windows 8 or does it make sure it's a duplicate of the original? When does it? Snapshots the original the way it is, and it starts taking differences. I think this is what happened. It starts taking differences between the two, the original and the clone. And so whatever it was at that moment kind of stays the same, and then the others can start to diverge. So it's a snapshot at that point, and then on the diverge, it doesn't maintain contact with the original. It, it doesn't, except the, the only thing is that, of course, if you remove all of everything from the original, now that whole bottom that the, the clone started with is gone. Right, because it's, it's still sharing that same base, that that base stat shot that it started with. Yeah. All right. So what what was it you wanted to try? It was one of you, Kofi maybe? Should I did the man pages, but they didn't but come up. But RM, it was something about RM. You wanted to try. What happens if you RM star or? RM without the star. RM without the star. Oh, I think yeah, it's. I thought that's how you did a removable, but. I think, yeah, I will show you. I'm pretty sure you have to tell it. I think it's going to come back with an error and tell us that you haven't told it what to remove. Oh, okay. But I'll show you that. I say I'm pretty sure because Linux is, you know, every every new distro, someone has tweaked something, and whatever you think was one way might be not that way the next time you try. So what does the purge do then? What is the what? Purge command that you were putting in. Okay. Um, so... 
I don't know lots of details about this, but okay. apt-get remove just removes the basic packages, but if you've made any configurations, uh, are there any extra files associated with the package, it doesn't remove those. If you say purge, it removes absolutely everything that has anything to do with that um, program. Okay. So what's the difference between that one with uh, remove star and purge star? Are they pretty much the same, or...? Um, uh, well, since it wouldn't do either one of them, I guess they're the same and that neither one of them did anything. Okay. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, terminal. So, um, so if I go up to, go back up to the top level, and I say, um, so I say uh, RM, and I just hit enter, it's just going to say, you have to tell me what to remove. And here I am as installer. If I say rm star, it's not going to really do anything because it's, it's going to look exactly the same because all of those are directories or links. Okay. So it won't, you know, there's this, okay, so there you can see that the directories look exactly the same. Is it, won't, it won't remove a directory without the rm dash rf. Okay. So now if I say rm dash rf, um, star, it's not going to let me do anything again because I'm not root. Um, it's just going to say I can't do that. And but if I sudo rm dash rf star, we can see how long the how long the display continues to to live uh, as as it slowly consumes itself. All right. So like, okay. So at some point. Dev proc run and sys. Oh, yeah, yeah. So those aren't even real. So let's see. The menu. Look how the menu has gotten a lot shorter. Like it, like it has no idea what to do. Everything is just, it's just confused. So all of this. The only thing that's left essentially is anything that's active in RAM. That's that's in its active memory. Everything else is just gone. So you can't do anything else uh, with it. So anyway, this is sort of fun you can have with virtual machines if you are the type to consider this sort of thing fun. Uh, let's see. So, um, oh, oh, I love it. So, look, you, like the the menus, it's just it just has no idea what to do with anything. Uh, I guess I could change the volume on the speaker. Probably can't actually play anything. I can't. It won't let me do anything with the time. Uh, it, oh, it does have the two desktops. It still lets me go back and forth between the desktops. Oh, of course not. Yeah, because it, it, the terminal is not even on the menu anymore, right? So I can't, I can't get to it. Yeah, I don't even know. I, you probably can't even. Hang on, let's see. Can you put it at top? You can't even go down to a TTY. Like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It won't even, it won't even exit to a TTY. Uh, uh, top. Um, oh, actually, there's a way to. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, yeah, right now I can't because I closed the terminal. <laughs> I can't do anything. It's kind of, it's kind of dead. It's sort of, sort of not much. File doesn't exist. Files. There are no files. All right. So anyway, right, see, I don't see any reason to save the machine state. By the way, you can save your machine state. Like if you're in the middle of doing something and you have to close your virtual box, you can just close it right there. And what it'll do is just freeze the machine at that moment, whatever you were doing, shut everything down. You can shut your computer down, whatever. Come back up, you open that virtual machine again. It's going to be exactly where you were when, when you saved the machine state. In the middle of editing a file or whatever it is that you were doing, that's another thing that's useful about virtual machines uh, if you like that sort of thing. 